yeah, as Angus introduced, yeah, introduced yeah, this is something related with third field theorem, and this is joint work with my advisor Sang Il. Oh, Sang Il, oh, laser pointer doesn't work. Yeah, whatever. So actually, I spend lots of much of the time of this talk to introduce the vertex minor and pivot minors. I think you are not familiar with this concept. So okay, first, uh, let's. Let's uh, remind the third field theorem. So this state that every simple three connected graph G has an edge E such that its deletion or contraction is still simple three connected unless it is isomorphic to a field graph. So field graph is, looks like this. So cycle with some additional vertex, so which, which uh, addition to every other vertices. So I think you already know this result in, and you learned in some introductory class of the graph theory. And if we, you consider some graph which is not isomorphic to a field, which looks like this, and you can easily check that this is simple and three connected. And if you uh, try to contract this red edge, then you can easily check that uh, the resulting graph is still simple three connected. And if you delete this blue edge, also the resulting graph is still simple three connected. And yeah, this is well known, very well known theorem in the graph stru structure, structural graph theory. And, one famous application of this theorem is we can prove that every simple three connected planar graph has a unique embedding on the sphere. So to prove some inductive step, you can use the third field theorem. And I cannot change the slide, wait, wait, wait a moment. Oh yeah, now it works. Yeah, and Oxley and Wu proved in 2000, they proved some stronger version. So actually if a graph is not isomorphic to a field, then it, oh, maybe it, I forgot to introduce what is a non-essential edge. So if you consider a graph G, which is not isomorphic to a field graph, then we have an edge E such that deletion or contraction is simply connected. And we call such an edge is a non-essential. So no, non-essential in some sense of to guarantee the simple three connectivity. And Oxley and Wu proved that if a graph is not isomorphic to a field, then actually we can find at least two non-essential edges. And also they characterize when the graph has at least three non-essential edges. So if a graph has no, not isomorphic to a field or a twisted field and a multidimensional field, then it has actually three non-essential edges. So let's re uh, let's re uh, record the field graph, which, which looks like this. And if you contract any spoke edge, contract spoke edge, then you can observe that oh, it has a uh, multi edges. So this this means that the resulting graph is not simple three connected. And also deletion, we have a um, vertex which has a degree two. So if, if we delete this, the resulting graph is not simple three connected. So field graph has no non-essential edges. And for the case of the three twisted field, then you can, which looks like this. So we have, you have some half of the field and also another half of the field and you combining it. And if you try to contract this red edge, then the resulting graph is still simple three connected. You can easily check then also it is allowed to delete this. And for the, three, uh, some kind of multi-dimensional here. So you can combining at least three of the half fields uh, looks, looks like this. And the, if you try to delete this, one of these center edges, then the resulting graph is still simple straight connected. So this is the only graphs which has at most two non-essential edges. Okay, people introduce our result and some definition about the vertex minor. So, I try to compare the result of the graph minor and the vertex minors. So I think that you are quite familiar with the vertex minor and in the vertex grid, uh, grid minor, uh, graph minors. And in the graph minor theory, there is some very famous result about the graph, something related with the grid theorem and well closure ordering. This is proved by Robertson and Seymour in the graph minor project. And in the vertex minor setting, there is some kind of analog. So, so Gillan, Guan, McCarthy, and Ulan proved the analog of the grid minor theorem. So let's 
let's record the grid minor theorem. So this means that our graph has a large two degrees, then graph has a large grid. And in the vertex minor setting, we use some kind of similar thing. So we use the length width or the click width. Then if graph has a large length width, then graph has some similar grid structure in the vertex minor setting. And some other results are also known only for the bounded length width class. And for the case of the top wheel theorem, Alice proved the, some analog result for the top wheel theorem. And our result is we try to prove some result corresponding to the Oxley and Woods theorem, what I introduced before. Okay, so now I will explain what is a vertex minor and what is pivot minors. Uh, local complementation is a graph operation. So we have a graph G, graph G and a, and a vertex B. So local complementation B means that we observe the each neighbors of V and we complementing each other, each other, each induced subgraph on the each neighbors. So if we change the adjacent she complementing the adjacent she, then we obtain this kind of graph. And it doesn't affect on any other pairs of vertices. And we say two graphs are local equivalent. If we, one can be obtained from the other by applying a sequence of the local complementation. And uh, graph H is a vertex minor of G if H is an induced subgraph of a graph locally equivalent to G. So for example, if you see this example, then actually you cannot get this graph from the G by, by only considering deleting vertices. However, if you applying a local complementation at B and after that deleting B, you can obtain this graph. So G, this graph is uh, not an induced subgraph of G, but this is a vertex minor of the graph G. And we will consider some another operation on the graph, so which is called pivoting. So pivot, we have an H E, and we said this is a pivoting E. Uh, resulting graph of, of the applying pivoting E. So this is nothing but uh, applying a consecutive three local complementation at V and then at W and at V again. So the resulting graph is actually looks like this. So we have graph G and on H E whose end vertices on V and W. And we will consider some three disjoint vertex, vertex subsets. So first one is the only the neighbor of V, so neighbor of V, but which is not a neighbor of W and not W. And some second uh, vertex that is a common neighbor of V and W. And third one is the neighbor of W, which is not V and not, not the neighbor of V. And we try to complement, complement take, consider the complementation of the bipartite graph uh, obtained by these two vertexes. Then you can consider this and you can obtain this. And for the case of any other two sets, then you can complementing each bipartite graph. So the resulting graph looks like this and some kind of technical issue, we swap the labels of V and W. And similarly, we define the pivot equivalent and pivot minor. So two graphs are pivot equivalent if one can be obtained from the other by applying a sequence of pivoting and a graph H is pivot minor, then we can define as like before. So in this subgraph of a graph, pivot equivalent to G. Okay, so let's consider some simple examples. So we put, we have a um, complete graph. So this is one of the most easiest example of the graph. And so we have K5 and we try to local complementing here, this vertex. Then you can easily check that the resulting graph is K14. So just a star. And actually what you can check is every graph which is locally equivalent to a complete graph then is a complete graph itself or it is just isomorphic to a star. And also you can check that if you try to pivoting this, then the resulting graph is itself. I mean, because if you consider the neighbors of the V and the other, any other vertices of V and W then they are common neighbors, common neighbors of V and W, so the resulting graph are same. And if you consider some bipartite graph, so for example, 
So you have this kind of K23. Then if you try to pivot in here, then this, then you can check that, oh, these two edges are disappear. So the resulting graphs looks like this. And one amazing, I mean, one important observation is if you applying a pivoting, then on the bipartite graph, then the resulting graph is still bipartite. Okay, Let's, I need to speed up a little bit. So I will define something weird definition. So which I usually call the pivot deletion. So we have graph G and a vertex V. And I, so this is equal to the G delete V if V has no neighbor and it is equivalent, it is equal to with G pivot V W here, W is a neighbor of V and after v deleting uh, and then deleting V. So this, what I call the pivot deletion. And of course there is lots of choice of W. So you can choose W and something, some another neighbor of W prime of V. Then actually these two graphs are of course, possibly not isomorphic, but one observation is these two graphs are pivot equivalent. And what you want to do is we want to observe some properties of graph up to pivot equivalent. So this is quite good. And Fouché proved that every vertex minor of the graph G on the VG minus small V, some designated vertices, vertex, then it is locally equivalent to one of these three graphs. So deletion V and lo local complementing at V and deletion V and pivot deletion V. And for the case of the pivot minors, uh, we, if we consider some graph pivot minors on this vertex, then it is pivot equivalent one of these. So let's recall some previous slide. So I explained some relation between the graph minor and vertex minor. And the, for the case of this some well, result on the well cause ordering and also our result, this is also proven for the pivot minor version. Okay, uh, now I spend time to explain some relation between the minors of original graph with some original minor relation and pivot minors. So let's consider uh, this graph. So we have some bipartite, uh, so we have graph and we consider some spanning tree, so which colored by red. And we, from this graph, we will build uh, some bipartite graph. So one part is an edge set of the spanning tree. And the other part is the edge set of the remaining vertices. And we give an incident relation between them as like follows. So we, so if we add an edge in the, to the spanning tree, then we have a unique cycle here. Then we have an, then we give an incident relation between A and one and A and two and A and three in the bipartite graph. And we can build a bipartite graph as follows. Yes. So if for the case of B, if, if you can observe the this fundam, uh, unique cycle, then because of this, we give an incidence relation. And of course, there is a lot of choice of the spanning tree. So if we choose A rather than one, then we obtain some another, another bipartite graph. And one can observe that we can observe that, oh, these two graphs are actually pivot equivalent. So the bipartite graph ob obtained from this graph and this spanning tree is pivot equivalent to some, the second, bipart second bipartite graph. So because of the time, I will not explain briefly, but also for the deletion, we can find some relation between the original graph and some bipartite graph obtained from the original graph. So what I want to say is we show that a uh, graph minor with original graph minor relation is related with the bipartite with graphs with pivot minor relation. And actually this can be ex extended to the binary metroid. So if you are familiar with the metroid theory, you can check that our oh, graph with respect to the graph minors are the subclass of the binary metroid with some usual binary metroid relation. And actually I show that I already mentioned that the equivalence between this kind of definition and actually this is exactly the intersection of the metroid and the graphs with respect to the pivot minor relation. Okay, okay. 
before introduce our result, okay, define one weird thing more. So I will define our prime graphs. So roughly say, our prime graphs with respect to the pivot minor relation correspond to the three connected graph with respect to the original graph minor relation. Okay. And uh, we have on um, some given graph G and a vertex by partition X and Y. And we say this is a split if H set form on by click. So H set between X and Y form on by click. So which looks like this. So in this case, we call X, Y is a split. And we said our graph is prime if it has no such kind of split. And Bush proved that uh, every graph, every graph locally equivalent to prime graph is also prime. In, in other words, we, if we have a two locally equivalent graph and one is prime, then also the other is prime. Okay, now I will explain our result. And be, before that, uh, it is worth to in, introduce, uh, so introduce the earliest result. So we said a vertex V of a graph G is non-essential if at least two of these three vertex minors are prime. Recall that every vertex minor on the vertex at VG minus small V is locally equivalent to this one of three of them. Okay, and maybe also you can recall the definition of the non-essential edges in the third field theorem. So we said uh, for a given simple three connected graph, if we delete an edge is non-essential, if and only put it, its deletion or its contraction is at least one of them is still simple three connected. And this is kind of analog of this kind of things. And Ellis proved that every prime graph with at least five vertices has a non and at least one non-essential vertice unless it is locally equivalent to a cycle. So you can see this cycle. And if we delete any vertex, then you can get a path. And actually you can easily check that every prime graph with at least length five is prime. And also for the case of the path, you can, by choosing this kind of two pi vertex pi partition, you can check that this is all not prime because this is a bicyclic. And also case of the pivot deletion, you can check that the resulting graph is a uh, pass, so it is not prime. This means that a uh, cycle has no non-essential vertex. And what it do, what it did is actually this kind of graph, which is not a locally equivalent to a cycle, has at least two non-essential vertices. And also we prove some pivot minor version. So we said a graph vertex G in a graph G, a vertex V of G is non-pivotal if this deletion or pivot deletion is prime. And because of the definition, every non-essential vertex is non-pivotal. And as a corollary, actually this is not that easy to prove the corollary from the theorem, but the corollary says, if a graph is not pivot equivalent to a cycle, then it has at least two non-pivotal vertices. And also we can prove some for the bipartite graph. And what I mentioned is our result implies the Oxley and Oost result because I already explained the relation between the graph minors and bipartite graph with pivot minors. So because of this region, our result implies the Oxley and Oost result. And of course, third field theorem. And we prove something more. So we also characterize when the graph has any three non-essential vertices. So if we, the graph has these two vertices and there is any two non, two uh, internally disjoint passes such that any one of, uh, no of them has length two, then if, if the given graph has, if the given prime graph is not locally equivalent to this graph, then it has at least two, three non-essential vertices. And we also prove, prove for the pivot minor version. Okay, let's close the, our, my talk with some open questions. So one, obvious question is, can you characterize prime graph with exactly three or exactly four non-essential vertices or non-pivotal vertices? And one another question is, actually this is related with the regular, uh, some kind of delta metric concept. So what I want to ask is, can you find some non-pivotal vertices U and V of G such that also 
And this one of these four graphs is also prime. So this is related with uh, some representation of the beta matrix. Actually, this is my original motivation of the, this theorem. Yeah. Thank you for listening. All right, let's give Don Q a round of applause for a fantastic talk. Yeah, thank uh, you for did, listening, yeah. That's really good. Does anyone have any questions? I've, I've got one actually. So I've never, I'd never heard of uh, vertex or pivot miners before, that, uh, before I saw this talk. What is the intuition for like why did why do people why are people interested in uh, these sorts of miners? Ah yeah, maybe also I didn't mention the length width, but you do you familiar with the tree width? Uh, tree width, yeah, uh, yeah, a little, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tree width is important to understand the structure of graph, right? But usually, tree width is only for the sparse graph. And okay. to 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 dealing with the structural theorem for the dense graph, some people consider about the click width. And actually, my ad advisor Sangi proved that uh, this is equivalent to a length width. And actually, length width is related with the vertex minor setting. Actually, if you change the neighbors, then length width doesn't change. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, so vertex minor and pivot minor is very good to understand the structure of the dense graph in some sense. Okay. And, okay. and also this is related with, as I mentioned before, the Metroid minor or moreover some regular uh, Delta Metroid minor. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. That's really interesting. Are there any other questions? Um, yeah, I have one question. Um, it's also about the theorem in 1961. So it, I think it just looks like something about, uh, you know, polytope. Is there any, some related results about polytopes or polytopes, you know, uh, for, for very simple three kinetic graph, there a corresponding, uh, there will be a realization of three polytopes. So, yes. So it's like, uh, you know, the theorem roughly says that uh, if you remove one of the edges, I mean, the non-essential edges, edge, then you can still get a three polytope. Uh, so, so you, three polytope means three dimensional polytope? Yes, yeah, three dimensional yeah. polytope. So is there any other results related to this or something? So what I remember is some, some connectivity is related with. Yes. So actually planar, three con, uh, planar graph can be understood as uh, three polytope because of the embedding on the sphere, right? Uh, yeah. In this sense, I, I think you can understand the planar graph. I mean, so uh, three connect, simple three connectedness implies a unique polytope structure, but uh, but I don't know about the contraction can be, what, what is contraction means in the polytope? So I don't know about that much. Okay, okay. Uh, but maybe in some sense, actually top two theorem also proven for the Metroid version. And I think that met, met, from the Metroid, there is a way to construct a polytope so from the base or the independent set. Maybe this, I mean, this is not three, three polytope, but maybe you can, in, you are interested in this kind of concept. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for, I don't know much about the polytopes. Okay, thank you. All right, um, anyone last question? All right, well, if not, let's thank the speaker again for a great talk.